These are the 30-year-old technical drawings for the Space Station Freedom that I found in my garage. I got to show them to a retired NASA Glenn researcher who worked on the project. Let me start here with the, with the story on Space Station Freedom. And uh, to, to really understand what, what they were doing, you really got to go back to the end of Apollo in the early 1970s. And as the Apollo era ended, NASA put together a, a, a plan which basically said, well, the next big step is going to be, we want to build a series of space stations, stations in low Earth orbit, okay, to, to, to be occupied and to do science and technology and things like that. After that, we want to move out to the moon and build a station around the moon, using that as a, as a, as a jumping off point. We'll build a base on the moon. Okay, and in order to support this, what they wanted to do is say, well, we've got to, we've got to reduce our launch costs, and so what we're going to do is build a space plane. Well, they tried to sell this to the Nixon administration, and it was like impossible. <laughs> Nixon, Nixon was not a big supporter of NASA because he viewed it as Kennedy's agency. Okay, and he had other problems, like he was trying to wind down the Vietnam War, and he had a huge federal deficit, and he goes, you know, we're not, we're not going to do any of this. So what he did is he said, all right, what you can do is we're not going to build any of this space station stuff. We'll build the reusable space plane, and the reusable space plane is obviously the space shuttle, which they started in 1972. So in 1981, when it, the thing started to fly, NASA went back to the, the old plan from the 70s and said, okay, well, the next logical step is to build the space station. Okay, and so they basically sold it to, to Reagan and said, okay, we want to build a space station. And, you know, Reagan accommodated that and said, okay, well, we'll, we'll start and we'll build, we'll, we'll effectively build space station freedom. Once they got the program going, Okay, it became much, much more complex and expensive than they, than they originally thought. And so consequently, what they did from 19, 1984 when they started to 1990, till 1993, which is the, the life of space station freedom, they, they continually did you know, design after design, and many times they, they were being, uh, you know, the, they were never funded at the level that, that, uh, that they wanted to be, principally because Reagan, Reagan basically said he was interested more in Star Wars. And they had another problem in that the shuttle, the shuttle operations costs were going through the ceiling on them. It, they, it, was, it, was, it was much higher than anybody had forecast or what they, what they believed. And so the station always got, always got shortchanged. And so what happened is they kept redesigning, and they started out with a they started out basically with the uh, power tower configuration. This was the 1984 starting point. We were going to build this in eight years, and we're going to have this completed in 1992 to celebrate the 500th anniversary of Columbus coming to America. Okay, nice. and we were going to build it for 10 billion dollars. Okay, which is wildly hard, optimistic. Hard <laughs> Finally, in 1987, this became the revised baseline configuration. If you look at that, the revised baseline configuration at a fairly high level is the ISS today. Sure. Okay. So what we're looking at on these plans paved the way, quite literally, for the ISS in the later 90s. Well... Yes and no. There were still a lot of grubs and other things that went on from 1987 until 1993. The 1993 was really the, the watershed on space station because there was a, a redesign that was directed by Clinton. And the upshot of the redesign was that the, the Russians were brought in to, as a full partner on the space station to, to basically help us. In, in, in a number of ways, which they did. The rationale that, that, that Clinton used is he was inter more interested, not necessarily building the space station. He wanted to basically put dollars 
back into, into Russia, okay, and into the Russian space program so that the scientists and engineers didn't, didn't scatter to the four winds and go to a lot of third world countries and get them into the ballistic missile business. Be that as it may, the Russians brought a lot to the table. They brought in the Soyuz, which allows us to have a, a lifeboat when the shuttle wasn't there. And they can, if something would happen to the space station, they can all basically punch out and they can, and they can return to Earth safely. The other thing that, that they did is the first two, first two launches were Russian modules which had power and uh, data and other things that allowed us to basically take and build out this particular station. So if we look at the snapshot that these plans give us, what sort of memories does this bring back for you? Where kind of, where are we in the configurations of space station freedom? Well, this was basically the Bush administration. They supported the space station, but fundamentally they were more interested in returning to the moon. And there was a there was a there was an initiative at that time called the Space Exploration Initiative, which Bush was funding. NASA goes, well, what we're gonna have to do is we keep getting the budget reduced and reduced, you know, because of you know the shuttle and the debt and the now the need to to, to fund the space exploration initiative and everything else. And they said, okay, for phase one, which is this, okay, what we're going to do is we're gonna take and we're gonna build a man-tended configuration. Okay, where what we have is, this is about 20 kilowatts of power, and we have a, a manned module here, and what we can do is we can build a man-tended station, where we, what we do is we visit, you know, once every, maybe six months, maybe three months, depending on, 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 uh, on, the, on the needs. And we put experiments up here and we put it on the, and we can put it on the truss. And it's just a man-tended configuration. Okay, nobody stays long-term because, you know, you don't have enough electrical power, you know, you don't have enough thermal, you don't have anything. But what we do is we take and we start with a man-tended configuration and we build off of this in phase two to eventually get to that. So what was NASA Glenn's work package on space station freedom? Okay, the, well, that's a good question. The overall space station program had, had four work packages. Work package one, which, is, which was Marshall, and their job was to build the modules. He had work package two, which was the Johnson Space Center. They were in charge of a lot of the distributed systems, like the comm system, data system, the truss system, the thermal system. You had a work package three, which was looking at uh, unmanned orbiting platforms early on in the, in the program, but what happened was we, we basically, that, that work package went away after a couple years as a cost-saving measure, and Goddard went out and did, did other things. Work package four was the Glenn Research Center's package. And fundamentally what that was was the power system. It was the end-to-end -end power system, the arrays, the batteries, the distribution system, you know, all the way out to the, out to the loads, both on the truss and in the, in the modules. The actual power system that flies on the ISS is the Space Station Freedom Power System. It, it went through the redesign pretty much unscathed. Wow. And, and fundamentally, what flies today is the Space Station Freedom Power System that was designed here. The other thing that people ought to be aware of is that the Space Station comes over Cleveland on yeah, a regular basis. It always does. Yeah. yeah it, How can we see it? Okay, well, it's easy to see, okay? There, there are many apps for it. When the space station passes over, it's the brightest thing in the sky, okay, next to the moon. When you see it go over, what you're actually seeing is you're seeing the sunlight reflected off the solar arrays oh, wow. on, the, on the station. You're seeing the space station freedom power system flying on the ISS over, over Cleveland. And you're also seeing really the masterwork of NASA Glenn in the area of space power. So this is this will just be speculation, but how do you think these plans could have ended up in my garage? Well, I suspect that that one of the one of the uh, contractors 
probably left them there, maybe by mistake, maybe purposely, because Grumman was the overall integration contractor that was brought in to, to bring the, the work packages together. Originally, it was, it was you know, NASA was supposed, to, was supposed to integrate all the work packages, but it became so complex and we did not have the people to do it, and so they brought in an integration contractor to, to bring all the work packages together. Overall, it could have been, it could have been a, a, a civil servant that worked on the station. It could have been one of the contract, one of the, the NASA uh, in-house contractors. It could have been uh, the, the space station power system contractor, which was Rocketdyne at the time. So it could have been any of those people. So am I, I, am I sitting on a big payday here? Are these plans worth a lot of money? Well, I was thinking about that, and, and it, it dawned on me that, um, you know, uh, I don't think Antiques Roadshow would be out after me looking for somebody to, to value NASA memorabilia. But I don't suspect that, that these things are really worth much, unfortunately. It's not like finding a Rembrandt in your, in your, right, uh, right. In your basement, unfortunately. So you, so you don't want to buy them off me, Jim? Uh, no, no, I, I don't think I... I think my wife would shoot me if I brought them home. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's funny.